James Bromberger. Joining me on the couch once again is uh, Michael Davies. And we're also joined right now, uh, luckily, by Jessica Smith. Uh, sorry, I forgot your name on the back. No, that's correct. It is correct. Yes. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> you need now, a coffee, James. I do need a coffee. It is early. It is, is effectively day one of LCA 2014 here in Perth. Um, we've got Jessica here because uh, of the many conferences that have just run, one of the ones that I thought was the busiest and, and uh, had a lot of buzz going around was one that you organized. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us about what it was and, and what it was? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to hear that you thought it was one of the busiest because that was really, really cool. Um, basically, just a, a, a boff focused on astronomy. There's a lot of um, interest in astronomy within the LCA delegate community, I think, that um, that Venn diagram that has uh, IT nerds and Linux nerds and astronomy nerds, there's quite a bit of overlap in all of that. Um, I'm really keen uh, on space and astronomy and an amateur astronomer. And I thought there was an opportunity there to um, present something that would just be, you know, what boffs are all about, which is common interest. Um, and was able to uh, put together um, a, a few speakers who um, are from some of the radio astronomy projects. So specifically, being in Perth was a fantastic opportunity yeah. because yeah. it's such a, a radio quiet area, that um, quiet area that uh, most of the large scale radio astronomy projects are happening mm. in WA and right. therefore UWA, Curtin, all of those kind of places are heavily involved. Um, ICRA, which is the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research. Uh, most of our presenters yesterday were from ICRA or associated with ICRA projects. Um, and so we were able to get some some people who were really the ones who were doing the engineering and doing the research. Mm. Um, and given that, I mean, you know, normally there's a call for papers, um, I thought given that this was the first year that we were looking at running this, that I wasn't really sure how much, um, I know there's a lot of interest in a lot of amateur astronomers, I didn't know how much depth uh, that there would be for people to be able to bring their own projects and I don't know what people are working on. Yeah. Um, so I kind of took the safe approach at, at this point in time, but I think, you know, I'd like to try and run it again next year. Absolutely. And I think there's an opportunity to do an early call for papers and see what we get and then fill in whatever gaps by talking to people who... And I, I think you know, with the level of activity that's happening here in Western Australia, mm. uh, well, in Australia, that by next year we'll see a, a lot more um, progress has been made and, and a lot more results for the tangible to set. Well, absolutely. I mean, the SKA, the Square Kilometre Array, is really the big hot thing in yeah. radio astronomy at the moment. It's a massive global project. Um, originally, it was competing between uh, South Africa and Australia. In the end, um, they decided, hey, everyone's a winner, so um, let's let both of them do it. Um, so it is a huge, huge scale project for radio astronomy. Um, the numbers are staggering. I was really pleased to see in a couple of our sessions we had some of the high-performance computing people yes, coming right. in as well because they were really interested. The numbers are staggering. Um, you know, the, the, the number that gets talked about for the SKA, um, uh, because we have thousands of dishes once it's, it's up and running, uh, spread across Australia and South Africa. And um, in the first day of testing that they switch it on for calibration and testing, it will generate as much data as is currently on the entire internet. Wow. And then the next day, it does it again. Yes. And again, so the challenges around designing, um, you know, ingress systems, storage systems, compute mm. systems, mm. and then how do you back that up? How do you mm. shuffle it around to the astronomers who need to analyse the data yes. sets? These are all massively enormous challenges that are squarely in the IT wheelhouse. Mm. And the people who are at LCA are the people who are positioned to do the high performance computing and to, to take this to the next level. And it's kind of like I, I describe it as um, if you've seen the... Uh, the Wallace and Gromit cartoons, where um, you know uh, he's sitting on the back of the train and he's he's throwing Laying out the train tracks as he's going. That's what we're doing. We have a deadline towards a cap. Uh, we need a capability for doing data storage and processing, uh, and we know the deadline, and we know we don't have that current capability, and we're heading towards it, and we're building the tracks. We're not just laying the tracks. We're figuring out how to build the tracks, yeah. and then laying them heading towards that deadline and it's a really really exciting time for um for radio astronomy especially it was really just fantastic serendipity that this was in perth yes. because getting people here was so much easier because they didn't have to fly they didn't have to have accommodation sure. um uh, it's going to be more of a challenge wherever it is next year i think but i'm sure we will find people um from within the delegate community mm. especially um, i'm really keen to see that happen um but also i'm sure we'll find people at wherever that happens to be who uh, are able to come and talk. I, I just don't think you'll have any problems at mm. all because just looking at 
the level of enthusiasm yeah. on the mailing lists before the conference. Yeah. Everyone's like, yes, exactly. This astronomy mini comp, well, and then turning into an astronomy boff as well. And it's like, well, that's the thing. Can we have some more, please? We managed to we managed to head out to the um, the Perth Observatory on Monday night for mm. the boff activity, which was great. There was a lot of interest in that. Uh, the carpooling ended up working out, so we had plenty of uh, capacity there. One of our speakers from the mini, actually two of our speakers from the mini comp were there as well. Um, a guy called Andrew Williams, who was speaking um, mostly about um, uh, control systems in the Murchison Widefield Array, which is what he works on, uh, and uh, Martin Kupak, who is from the Desert Fireball Network, which is best name ever. Um, <laughs> they basically have camera systems that triangulate um, um, inbound meteoroids and then they try and go and figure out where they landed and go and pick them up so oh, that they awesome. can track what their orbits were, where they came from, uh, do some spectrophotometry on them and then also compare that to the actual rock that they pick up afterwards, which is awesome. So they were both out there and Andrew was able to take us up to the, uh, they have a, an, a, a telescope that's not working at the moment because they had some water damage on the CCD. Uh, that was up, uh, it's a 61 centimetre telescope um, they're doing uh, a lot of work there still uh, and Andrew fortunately he was the person who as the first year of his PhD um, was actually building and attaching uh, he was attaching one of the earliest digital cameras to it and building some auto uh, automation and control systems for it uh, and then he's gone back and done additional work on it so he was it was great that he was able to come up uh, last night he I think is involved in the observatory anyway as one of the volunteers and so he was able to kind of talk us through that and give us some insight you know so we got a bit of an insight site that people who go up to the observatory don't normally get. Plus they had uh, you know, four telescopes ranging from about an 11 inch up to about a 16 inch uh, there with volunteer operators that were showing us various things, you know, all of the common um, awesome things, whether it was the Pleiades or Orion Nebula or, uh, you know, and Jupiter was up so we got a really nice view of Jupiter and the Galilean moons and so everyone got that kind of visceral experience which I think is, is one of the awesome things, you know, Astronomy mostly is about data analysis now. Uh, a lot of astronomers never go out to telescopes very regularly. Yes. And they it's don't see stuff with their eyeballs. Days. It is, and it's there's still something about going out of a night time with a telescope and pointing it at Saturn or Jupiter. Right. And that amazing thing, you kind of think, you know what? Those eyeball, those um, those photons that are smashing themselves yeah. to to pieces on the back of my eyeballs were literally at Saturn, yeah. you know, 75 minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of that when you you explain that to people and they see that for the for the first time rather than uh, on a Hubble image or something like that, right. there's something visceral about it and, and that Absolutely. really connects it's you. It's that whole motivation. And yeah. It's like it, it really yeah. stirs up. It's like wow, this is something that I, I can get really excited it's, about. It's isn't an it? amazing thing of, of yeah. amateur astronomy and a lot of amateur astronomers in the optical. Uh, field, mostly obviously in optical because it's more accessible, um, are actually doing you know real um, contributory science where they are they're uh, helping astronomers with observations for variable stars. Yeah. There, some of them are doing um, uh, photometry um, and uh, some spectral analysis. You know, there are people out there who have uh, what would have been ten years ago a professional grade CCD on their cameras. They've maybe spent. 30, 40 grand on a mountain, 30 or 40 mm. grand on a telescope, and they're, they're taking images that are both pretty and amazing, so that we would swear were taken by Hubble, you know, yeah, only yeah. a few years ago, but also they're actually doing real contributions in science, whether it's, as I said, variable stars or occultations or whatever, timings and things like that, and all of that data, there's this huge army of people who are making their little bits of observations and contributions and that is being wrangled by professional astronomers and then they're getting you know they're getting uh, annotations in papers because they're contributing science so it's one of the few fields where amateurs can really make um, a very significant contribution and I think that's exciting and of course on the IT side it's it's a field where um, <coughs> it's possible for developers to contribute to that as well one of the things I talked about yesterday was uh, Distro Astro, which is a fairly new um, Linux distribution that is focused on providing an out-of-the-box tool set of uh, astronomy tools yeah. for both amateurs and also professionals as well. Yeah. And, and there are some gaps in that. You know, they include some apps that were basically originally built for Windows. They're free but not open. Um, and so they're running under Wine. And there's some opportunities maybe to get people excited about the idea of, well, let's build an open source version of that mm. that fills that gap in the tool set. Or um, maybe make people aware of the fact that there are these awesome things like Celestia, which is like a 3D visualization tool. Um, you, uh, I, I ran a, a fly through of the solar system yesterday, which you can do on, on a laptop. Mm -hmm. um, or, uh, you know, Stellarium, which is a, a planetarium software. 
and you know we've got a great developer community here um, they're interested in astronomy it may have never occurred to them that there are astronomy projects that they can contribute to Absolutely. and so you know let's getting them get get them um, bug fixing and committing and extending features and so I, I think, think that would be a wonderful thing it's been a fantastic thing. thing to have this boffin to get people involved and um, hmm. I really look forward to, to having the next time I think we're going to have to run up we're running out of, of time, totally totally time. thank you ever so much for joining us thank on you the very much and, thank you, uh, I look forward to doing this again potentially next year my pleasure I hope so yeah, yeah. I really hope so marvellous thank, thank you very much thanks thank you bye Thank <laughs> you.